Is this connected to fermions and bosons? You, you're yeah, talking yeah, yeah. About? So th this was what, what happens is what seems to happen. Okay, it's you know subject to revision next even <laughs> next few days. But what seems to be the case is that uh, bosons are associated with essentially merging in multi-way graphs, and fermions are associated with branching in multi-way graphs, and that essentially the exclusion principle is the fact that in branchial space things have a certain extent in branchial space that in which things are being sort of forced apart in branchial space, whereas the case of bosons, they get they, they clump together in branchial space. And the real question is, can we explain the relationship between that and these things called spinners, which are the representation of half integer spin particles that have this weird feature that usually when you go around 360 degree rotation, you get back to where you started from. But for a spinner, you don't get back to where you started from. It takes 720 degrees of rotation to get back to where you started from. And we are just it feels like we are we're just incredibly close to actually having that understanding how that works and it turns out it, it looks like my current speculation is that it's as simple as the uh directed hypergraphs versus undirected hypergraphs oh, interesting. <laughs> uh the relationship between spinners and vectors so which nice, is just it's interesting it's, yeah that would be interesting if these are all these kind of uh nice properties of this multi-way graphs of, of branching and, right, see, and but, rejoining. But spinners have been very mysterious. And if that's what they turn out to be, there's going to be an easy explanation yeah, of what's going on. Yeah, it's directed versus undirected. <laughs> it's just, and that's why there's only two different cases. It's well, uh, Why are spinners important in uh, quantum mechanics? Can you just give a... Uh, yeah, so spinners are important because they are um, they're the representation of, of for electrons, which have half integer spin. They are the the wave functions of electrons are spinners just like the wave functions of photons are vectors the wave functions of electrons are spinners and and they have this property that when you rotate by by 360 degrees they come back to minus 1 of themselves and take 720 degrees to get back to the original value and and they are a consequence of of um uh and we usually think of 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 rotation in space as being, you know, when you have this notion of rotational invariance and rotational invariance, as we ordinarily experience it, doesn't have the feature. You know, if you go through 360 degrees, you go back to where you started from, but that's not true for electrons. And so that's that's why understanding how that works is important. Yeah, I've been playing um, with Mobius uh, Strip quite a bit lately, just for fun. And yes, yes, it has. It adds some funk, it has the same kind of funky properties. Yes, right, exactly. You can have this the so-called belt trick, which is this way of taking an extended object, and you can see properties like spinners with that kind of extended object that... Um, yeah, it would be it, very cool if there's it somehow connects the directed versus undirected. I think that's what it's going to be. It's, I think so, it's going to be as simple as that, <laughs> but we'll see. I mean, this is this is the thing that, that, you know, this is the big sort of bizarre surprise, is that, you know, uh, because, you know, I, I, I learned physics as probably... Let's say, let's say a fifth generation in the sense that, you know, if you go back to the 1920s and so on, there were the people who were originating quantum mechanics and so on. Maybe it's a little less than that. Maybe I was like a, a, a third generation or something. I don't know. But, but, you know, the people from whom I learned physics were the people who were, you know, who had been students of the students of the, the people who originated the, the current understanding of physics. And we're now at, you know, probably the seventh generation of physicists or something from the from the early days of 20th century physics. And, you know, whenever a field gets that many generations deep, it seems the foundations seem quite inaccessible. Mm -hmm. And they seem, you know, it seems like you can't possibly understand that. We've gone through, you know, seven academic generations and that's been, you know, that's been this thing that's been difficult to understand for, for that long. It just can't be that simple. 